Welcome back. And uh, as I said in the last video, we're going to spend some time cleaning up the CSS because it's kind of messy, or I don't know if it's messy, but you can see there's a lot of repetitive stuff going on, on the fret marks especially. We have a content of nothing here and position absolute. And it's the same here, here, here. So maybe we can just uh, take that and put it up here. Let's just target the um, single fretboard and this is the after element, zero element, that we're going to target here. Uh, because we're already using the before, so if I start to mess with the before, uh, then it's going to have an effect on, uh, on, on this one, on the, um, on the dot with the note name in it. And the next one is a double fret mark. So let's add that. Double fret mark. Actually has before already, so let's take that one. And the next one is the... Double fret my after like this, and we're just gonna take all the things that they have in common, and just steal it from here. I'm just gonna grab that and put it back here, and then I'm gonna clean up down here. It feels good, doesn't it? Delete this. We only have the position and the transform, and this one as well. And when I save this, nothing should hopefully happen. Uh, something happened. That's not good. So that is probably because, uh, let's see, node fret before, single fretboard. I don't know what I'm calling it that, so it should be fret mark, of course. And they are back in business. Great. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to control this this variable up here, number of strings from the um, from the JS, from the JavaScript here. And I can do that by all the way at the top here. I'm going to make a new constant and let's call it root and set it equal to document dot document element. And that's the way we can get um, get access to this one right here. So I'm going to save that and nothing will of course happen right now. But the first thing we can do in the setup fretboard method is tell the CSS what how many strings we actually have because we use that number in both the JavaScript and in the CSS. So I can go root and I can go style and then I can set property. And which property do I want to set? I want to set the number of strings, because that's what we have over here. The number of strings. So let me just grab that here. Like this. And paste it in here. And then I want to set it to what? I want to set it to number of strings. Okay because I have set number of strings here. So I'm going to save that. And right right now, if I change the variable number of strings in the JavaScript, it should work. So let's say we want four strings. I'm going to save that. We have four strings. Let's say three strings, or maybe only two strings. That's working as well. So let's say we want seven or eight strings. That's going to be a weird guitar, but it there's probably something like that in the world. I don't know. But let's go back to six strings. So that works. So what's happening is we're grabbing it right here. We got grabbing the document element and we are setting it down here when we um when we set up the fretboard. So it's pretty dynamic right now. It's working pretty well. Um but we also want to add the note dots, the dots that we uh, when we hover over the fretboard, we want to see which note it is. So we're going to do that in the next video and remember we have it right here. Its opacity is set to zero right now. I'm just going to set it to, to one and save that. So you can see uh, we have a D flat on every single one and that we don't want that. We want uh, we want it to display the right, the correct note for that fret. So let's have a look at that in the next video.